By the end of this video, we're gonna get this little froggy running around the screen. Maybe not this fast, but pretty fast. We're gonna be using Unity Input System. We're also gonna look up setting a basic little sprite for our character. Cool, let's take a look. So first of all, I'm gonna to go to Pixel Boy's itch.io page for his Ninja Adventure asset pack, and then download this using the download now button. Now from my downloads, I'm gonna find this, unzip it, and then go inside Ninja Adventure asset pack, go to actor and go to characters. In here, you can choose whoever you want to be your character in your top-down base template. But for me, I'm going to grab Masked Frog. To keep this easier to see, I'm going to go into Separate Animation, and then I'm going to bring in Idle just for now. So I'm going to click and drag this into my assets, and then back in Unity, I'm going to click on my player's Idle, set the sprite mode to be multiple, the pixels per unit to be 16, filter mode to be point no filter, and compression to be none. Sprite mode is multiple because there are multiple sprites in this image. Pixels per unit to be 16 because that's the size of our individual pixel guys, 16 by 16. Filter mode to point no filter. This means that our pixels will be crisp and they won't go blurry. And our compression to be none, similar thing, means our pixels will be nice and crisp. Click apply. Now click on sprite editor. Click slice. Type to be grid by cell size. And now we can choose the size of our pixel. So like I said, it's 16 by 16. Then click Slice to cut our image up. Then click Apply in the top right. And now if we close this down, you can see we've got this little arrow on our idle picture. If you click on this, you can see your individual sprites. I'm going to grab the first one of this and drag it into our game scene so that we now have a player game object created for us with our sprite that we want. I'm going to rename this to be Player. And you can see it looks a little funny in the game scene. This is because it's on free aspect and the pixels are a little warped. If you click this free aspect drop down and set this to be the size that you want it to be, I'm going to set mine to be full HD 1920 by 1080. And he still looks a little weird. It's because the scale is off. So if we set this, it is on 1.3. Set this back to times one. Now he looks pixel perfect perfection. <laughs> okay, let's get on with the movement. So for our player to move, we're going to need to add a component. For game objects to be able to move, they need rigid bodies to give them physics within the game. Because this is a top-down RPG and not a platformer, we're not actually going to be using any gravity. If we press play now, our character is just going to fall straight down. That's because his gravity scale is set to 1. So instead, let's set that to 0 so he'll no longer leave us. Cool, now because we're going to be using Unity's input system, which is their kind of new way of mapping our player's inputs, this makes it easy to implement different types of controls, like a controller or a keyboard, we're going to need to go to Window, Package Manager, and change the drop down in the top left from in project to unity registry then search for input and you should be able to see input system pops up if you click install and then wait for it to install you get this pop-up asking if you want to restart the editor you can say yes and your unity editor will close and then reopen now that's all installed we can close this off then we'll click back on our player scroll down and go add a component and search for player input you can see here under actions we currently have none so if we click the button Create Actions, then click Save, this will create us some default actions. All these actions are fine for us for now. You can open them up to take a look if you want to, but they just have all the basic key bindings that you would expect from any normal game you've ever played. So cool, we don't have to do anything with this, so we can close this off. And finally, we can write our player's movement script. So once again, click Add Component, and at the very bottom, click New Script, and I'm gonna name this Player Movement. Cool, when that's ready, double click on it to open it up and at the top we'll add in the variables we're going to need. First we'll add a private float for our movement speed, which I'm going to set to a default of 5F. Then a private rigid body 2D, which I'm going to call RB. And then we're also going to want a private vector 2 to store our move input. Now to be able to access our player's rigid body, in our start we're going to go rigid body equals get component, then triangle brackets. Rigid body 2D. What this will do is try to get the component off of whatever this script is attached to, which is going to be our player. Now in our update, we're going to use our rigid body and go rigid body dot velocity and set that to equal our move input times our move speed. Cool, now we need a way to set this move input using those actions we just created with the Unity input system. So down below, we're going to write a new function called public void move. We're going to say input action dot Call back context and call this context. You can see there's a red squiggly underline under input action. If you hover over this and then go show potential fixes, it'll suggest the correct import that we need to get this working. If you click on this, it adds it to the top. So now all we need to do is go move input equals context 
dot read value triangle brackets vector two and then close brackets cool and that's it for the script if we go back to unity and go back to our player we're going to have to make a way for our player input to communicate with our script my favorite way to do this with unity input system is to go to the behavior drop down which currently says send messages click on this and click invoke unity events now you can see we've got this new events section so if we open this up and then open up player you can see we've got these three events these events correlate to the events inside our top-down template input actions that we created earlier so what we want to do is move our player so let's click the plus under move and now we have an empty object slot so what i want to do is in the hierarchy grab my player and drag it over to this empty slot now in the drop down that says no function we're going to click on this and go down to our player movement script and then click move and guess what that's it if we now press play i'm going to try moving my character around with the arrow keys there he goes there he goes very nice very nice now I'm going to move him around with WASD. Very cool. Now, if you feel, oh, my player's too fast or too slow, and I want to change his movement speed. But to do that, I'm going to have to go back into my script because it's a private field. See, if we scroll down our player movement script, you can't see any variables inside it. But if we go back to our movement script, and in front of our private float move speed, type a square bracket, and then serialize field, and then another square bracket, and save that. When you go back to Unity, and you select your player, scroll down, and you can now see your movement speed inside the inspector. Now you can see I'm moving at five, let's say miles per hour. <laughs> I can up this to 10, and he moves way faster, or to two, and he moves way slower. Oh, he's so slow, like old man frog. You can do that with almost any variable to keep it both private, but also editable in the inspector. If you edit this field while this is playing and then you unplay, you'll see it goes back to our default number five. But if you edit this outside of our playing debug session, it'll stay to whatever value you give it. So if we press play again and scroll down, you'll see it's still set to 10 as I did that outside of the debug session. If I stop this again, it stays at 10. Using the serialize field makes it easy to test things. So it's very handy. Sorry if I went over any basics that you already knew, but I wanted to make sure we're all on the same page. Now, if you don't feel like doing any of this yourself or something's gone wrong and you're not sure what, you can grab this whole package on my Patreon or you can just grab the script for free. In the next video, we're going to get our character animated. So we're going to focus on the idle and walking animations. So cool. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.